Now, if you follow my channel, you know I love the MSRs or modern sporting rifles, you know, like ARs. Now, they have become very popular for hunting and target practice. Their accuracy has become far better than anyone ever expected or anticipated. Now, with that said, there are many of you, including me, that still prefer an old school gun for hunting, like the time-tested bolt action. Now, one can make a very valid argument for the KISS, or keep it simple, stupid technology, like bolt actions, because of the reliability, the simplicity, and the accuracy that they're known for. You just can't go wrong with a bolt action. Now, you pretty much eliminate, if not all, reliability issues, and I actually much prefer them when it comes to using my suppressor because it means no gas in the face at all, and the action is clean. Now, not a lot has changed over the years with the bolt actions, you know, other than the quality of the barrels and the triggers, which is amazing. There is a lot of options to choose from these days as far as companies, you know, and, and different kinds of barrels. You know, we've got the carbon coating, the carbon fiber, uh, and many offer guarantees of sub-MOA accuracy if, it, if you use the right ammo. Now, what more do you need for hunting, right? I mean, everybody agrees shot placement is everything. Now, here's the, here's the real question. Have you heard of HUA? They have been making guns since 1952. Actually, before that, we'll get to that a little history. Now, I got my first HUA about 15 to 20 years ago in the 243, and it's a tack driver, and I've taken a lot of deer with it. Um, I have put every kind of ammo through it over the years, including the cheap steel case stuff, which is not recommended. Um, but again, this was a long time ago before I even knew what they recommended. And the thing is, is I have never, ever, to my knowledge, memory had one single issue. In fact, it has been uh, incredibly reliable and rock solid. Now, HUA has come a long way in the last 20 years with the variety and the options, not just in calibers, but also the actions, the barrels, the triggers, the stocks, and a whole lot more. Now, I want to review one of the most basic. I've got another one that's going to be a separate review that's going to be on the other end of the spectrum, all decked out carbon fiber barrel, you know, the, the, the totally new chassis system and everything. But I wanted to review this one, you know, it's sort of, I wouldn't say, I don't want to say the bottom, but the affordable line of the bolt action in their walnut hunter. It's going to be kind of, you know, your standard entry level for the hunter. Um, anyway, the walnut hunter in what they call a standard action or the 1500 barreled action in a 6.5 Creedmoor, because I think that is an incredibly accurate round and I want to see what this can do. Anyway, is HOA one of the best kept secrets? Let's find out. Nice. <laughs> okay. I'm Drew Case. Welcome to Beyond Seclusion, where I only give you my honest opinion, and it is what it is. Now, a very brief history of HUA. They stand. They started making rifles in 1936 in Japan. Now, after World War II, they started making hunting rifles for the U.S. market around 1960, and they gained a reputation for quality rifles. Um, you know, around 1967, they were becoming pretty popular. Now, they have a long history of producing solid, quality, and affordable hunting rifles in the U.S. market. Now, the first time I shot at a mile, I was using a 6.5 Creedmoor, and it is well known for its accuracy. That's why I wanted this in the 6.5 Creedmoor. I'm anxious to try, you know, who is 6.5 Bolt Action, take a quick look at the specs and tech, of what we've got here so we know what we're starting with.
Okay, real quick here, let's just do a back to front. We've got a bit of a pad here. We've got beautiful walnut. It's absolutely gorgeous wood. Some wonderful checkering. Okay, the safety is a three position safety. I'll show you that all the way up. Okay, that's fire. Then we move down one. It's a three position. Okay, one click. But then we can go one more and that actually locks everything down. So the bolt won't even open. That's a really nice feature. And then the trigger itself here, I'll show you that. Barrel's free floated. Um, you know, it doesn't have huge margins there. If it is touching, it's really easy. You just loosen the screws, kind of take it out and readjust it and you'll get it to free float. Nice tapered barrel and we come down and it comes threaded with the thread protector. Over here on the trigger, you have the internal mag and we've got the release there for that. And that's why a bolt is KISS. Okay, real quick here, let's just show you the trigger. Got just a little bit of take up. Oh, that's crisp and clean. Do that again here real close. A little bit of take up hits the wall. There is no creep, no mush. That is what they say, glass rod like break. It doesn't get much better than that. Okay, let's just see what we got for pounds. I've got other ones, guys. You know, some people may say, oh, you know, he's using really low tech. I've actually found that this has been equal, the same as the high, the higher end digital ones that I have. And this is actually just a lot easier to manipulate. What is that, two and a half? <laughs> Two and a half. Consistent. Absolutely no need to do anything with a trigger. It's going to come with a custom trigger. Okay, so when it comes to accuracy, we got a lot of factors involved. You know, you of course have the gun, the quality of the barrel. Um, by the way, uh, if you didn't catch that on the Specs and Tech Cold Hammer Forge, that's top quality. Um, but we also have the trigger, the optic, the ammo, the stock, and lastly, the skill of the shooter. And I think it's at least above par. So you just saw what who is bringing to the table. For the ammo, I'm going to use some of the best that Hornady has for this gun and try a few different loads. Now, who specifically recommends Hornady? Okay, that, that should be known if you're going to test the sub MOA accuracy. Now, they specifically recommend certain loads from Hornady uh, for each caliber, and you can get a, a PDF from them to maximize the accuracy. Now, for the optic, you know, I'm going to use uh, a primary arms GLX 4 to 16 by 50 with the ACSS Apollo 6.5 Creedmoor. I'm doing a review on this. I've actually had it for a while. I've used it on some other guns and it's a solid optic, guys. Uh, but I need to finish up the review on that. What I like is, is this is specific for the 6.5 with the holdovers, the windage and so forth, which I think is going to help when we reach up there at 500 yards. You know, we get to test out kind of both of them at the same time. Now between Hornady's ammo, you know, who is rifle and primary arms GLX, you know, I feel pretty confident that we should be able to nail their sub MOA guarantee. It's time to find out. Okay, so I wasn't really planning on doing any reviewing today. It is a beautiful day getting ready to go on vacation and, you know, just finishing seasoning the barrel. I didn't think we were quite there yet, but I just fired a third shot and you really need to see this uh, because I want to stop here before I fire anything else. Let's take a look. There we go, guys. That 
Well, we have met the sub MOA guarantee. Um, I wasn't expecting it. You know, when you're seasoning a barrel, uh, I just put up some new paper. You, you can have the groups really spreaded in that seasoning part. So, you know, not just with, with this gun, but with any gun, don't be discouraged, you know, at the very least until you're through a second box of ammo. Now, sometimes it goes a little faster. Sometimes, uh, it goes a little slower, but you know, I'm shooting and then I'm letting the gun sit for, you know, probably five minutes and then I'm shooting again. Temperature makes a huge difference. So, you know, it, like this gun really is for hunting. So when you think about it, you need to have a cold bore zero, which is what I have here. Because if I go out and I'm hunting, you know, I don't want, you know, I'm, I'm shooting round after round after round and I dial it down to here. Well, that barrel's hot. And then I go out and especially during hunting season, it's 20 degrees out or something. And then that zero is going to be way off. So, you know, right now we're coming into spring. So this wouldn't even necessarily be the zero that I have for when it's 20 degrees out. But anyway, just wanted to show you we've met the sub MOA guarantee. Um, I want a few, I want to put some more rounds in it just to, just to see what they do. So this was the final group today, finishing seasoning the barrel. There's eight shots. That's really not bad. You know, I'm, I put that one at a flinch, but maybe not. Um, yeah, but we're still, still breaking in the barrel. Okay, so we got a beautiful morning here. You know, we've got the barrel, I think, pretty much seasoned in. We already hit the sub MOA guarantee. We have not tried um, the 140 grain, the ELD match. I want to see what kind of groups we can get with that uh, before the wind comes up. It never fails. As soon as I sit down, the wind comes up. Uh, my windmills aren't turning, so it's telling me that it's a, a pretty light one. I'm going to do a three-shot group here to start with. Just see what we get. Um, and then probably depending on what happens with that group, I'll do what I did before. I'll fire a shot, let the barrel cool off, fire another shot, and make sure that we can get sub MOA with that. I believe this is the one that was actually on the list. So let's just get started here and see how we can do. And that was a little to the right. Those are within about a quarter inch of each other. I don't know if that one would do the sub MOA. I'll, I'll show you. It's a, it's a decent group. Um, I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do what I did before. I'm going to fire a shot, let the barrel cool, fire another shot, let the barrel cool, um, and we'll see what that does. Okay, so the zero was for the 143 grain. We're just a little bit to the left, a pretty decent group. I think I'm gonna make a couple adjustments because I wanna have it zeroed, I think, for this one. So we'll do that, let the barrel cool, and we'll give it another go. And once we've got that done and we're satisfied, then we're gonna reach up there at 500 and see what kind of group we can get, assuming that we don't have wind. Otherwise, we're gonna to have to wait for another day. Now that one was right smack in the bullseye. So, um, yeah, let's uh, let's see what a couple more follow-up shots do. Much, uh, it's pretty, it's pretty, pretty close to the sub MOA. There's the last three shots there. After that, the one and the adjustment. They're almost all touching. Well, I want to add a few more to that. Um, and then make our final adjustment before we jump out to some distance. Real quick here, let's take a look at what I'm seeing. Okay, so that's what I'm seeing on high power. I think you can see the groups pretty good. Let's run down and take a look up close. All right, there we go, guys. That was three shots, 
and I did four clicks. And then I had that one, and then I had that one, and then I had the remaining one, two, three, four. Yeah, you know, there you go. I did, with this, I did one click to the right. We're gonna start with a new dot, and let's see what we can get. <laughs> oh, I gotta show you that one. point where you just have to stop, drop the mic, walk away. Oh, I wish I could right now. Um, yeah, I, I dropped a mic. I want to walk away from this review, but we've got to go out at some distance. We got to do some more groups. We got to test it with my suppressor on. But anyway, you know, yeah, that's awesome. That just makes your day. So my first initial 500 yard shots do have just a little bit of breeze and it's hot. That's that's pretty good. That was the first shot and then the last two shots. So I'm just a little low. I'm going to go just a bit higher up and, you know, maybe go just off to the left. Just a dash. Hey, folks, are you enjoying this review? If you are, help support the channel. Hit that subscribe button. This helps more than just about anything. It's simple, quick, costs you nothing, not a zip, zero, nothing. So hit that button. Keep the reviews coming. Now, if you have not visited my webpage, you should for many reasons, like my discount codes for some of the great companies, including ammo, guns, and gear. I have a list of the companies that I use the most and recommend. At the bottom of the page is a list of current discount codes ranging anywhere from 5 to 15% off anything in your cart. Now, you should be interested in my crazy, stupid deal subscription. Here are some of the deals that I found in the past. And when I find these, I now have the ability to share in an instant with everyone that subscribes. And I blast them out in an email as soon as I find them. It costs you nothing. Unsubscribe at any time. I have saved folks hundreds, even thousands of dollars. Don't take my word. Read the comments. It works. It's awesome. And it costs nothing. If you follow my channel and you shop on Amazon, you can help support and keep the reviews coming by going on to Amazon through my link. Anything and everything you purchase by doing so helps support the channel. You can literally buy toilet paper through my link and it helps support the channel and the reviews. Simply save the link to your phone or your computer and shop as you always do. It'll Check out my highly rated online courses. They come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. You got nothing to lose. Literally thousands have found them helpful. Read the reviews and see for yourself. And check out the cooking tips page. There are some awesome recipes on there. Good food. And it can literally save you thousands of dollars a year. Thanks for your help. Couldn't do it without you. Hey, we got a beautiful spring day here. There is currently no wind, which is a rarity here. Anyway, I want to use some of Hornady's, what do we got here? The 140 grain ELD. Let's reach up there at 500 and see what kind of groups we're getting. Hey, real quick here. It's 68 degrees out. We've got no wind, and I'm going to wait five minutes in between each shot. I'm going to do five shots with 140 grain, and then I'm going to do five shots, five minutes apart with 143 grain, 143 grain ELDX on a different target, and we'll see what kind of groups we get. Okay, we're switching over here to the Precision Hunter, the 143 grain. And we'll put five in here. Now I have not cheated and I haven't looked at any of these. So I have no idea between the two different rounds where they're at. So it will be, uh, it'll be a surprise for both of us. All right. That's five of each. Let's go take a look. Hey, real quick here, show you what I'm seeing at 500. Okay, so that's what I'm seeing at 500, and I was putting the five right in the middle of those targets. All right, let's go take a look. Here we go. This was the 140 grain. About one, two, three, four. That 
that's a solid group. It's a shame I didn't get just the three. Had a flyer there. You know, that's not bad, guys. Probably need to do a couple clicks up. All right, and then here's the 143 grain. That's a really good group, too. One, two, three, four, five. You know, again, get rid of the flyer, and you have a palm-sized group at 500 yards. Real quick here, just for reference, that's the house. That's 500 yards. Okay, so those were pretty nice groups at, at 500 yards, shooting just a little bit low off of this scope. I don't know about you, but paper is boring. I got a 12-inch gong up there. Let's see if we can hit it now that we know it's shooting a little low. Let's give it a go. <laughs> nice. All right. We're not going to wait five minutes between shots. It's so awesome because I can see it move long before we hear the ting. I don't think I would shoot a deer that far, but if I wanted to, we've got the accuracy with this. I mean, we're shooting a 12 inch gong. That's a pie plate. That's more than enough to have a good, decent shot in the torso. And again, a lot of people are going to be like, nah, I'm not saying I'm going to, I'm just saying, Hey, you know, it's possible if we wanted to. Now I have found with the really thin tapered barrels, they do heat up really fast. And when they heat up, the zero changes, which is why I did those five minutes apart. I forgot to hit play. I just nailed it at 500 and 400. Um, barrel's warm now, but uh, let's give it a go. Nice. That's 500. Try another one at 500. That's the 12 inch gong up there. Nice. All right, I'm gonna use the 400 mark on the optic here and let's go 400. Nice. Let's try uh, Let's try the small gong. I think it's 10 inches. Nice. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, hitting that small gong up there at 400. That's, that's nice. All right, we missed that one. That barrel, that barrel is hot. Hey guys, I was hoping to use my suppressor on this just, you know, for some added fun. Unfortunately, the, the diameter of this barrel does not fit any of the adapters that I have. So I'm not going to be able to shoot it suppressed, but I do want to still have a little fun. I want to see with my larger target up there at 500 yards. Let's see if we can get four shots off as fast as I can cycle it and get them all on target. Now this isn't the 12 inch gun. This is my IDPA up there. Let's, uh, let's give it a go. And, uh, as fast as we can, We'll put them on. Nice. <laughs> okay. And the barrel is hot, but you know, we're not going for super precision there. We're shooting a torso target at 500. That's pretty good. Okay, got four more shots. That barrel's so hot, I can smell it. We're gonna see the wind. Yep, all right, we're gonna go just a little bit to the right.
There we go, guys. There you have it, guys. It is what it is. You decide what you think. I hope you enjoyed the video, found it helpful. If so, make sure and hit that sub button. This helps the most. Like and comment. Until next time, guys, remember, educate our young people to shooting and gun safety. Educate everybody. Um, every time that we're on the range, every time that we're shooting, in, in today's, you know, um, political climate and just in every aspect, all eyes are on us when we're shooting, which makes us ambassadors for the Second Amendment. So we need to be good ambassadors. We need to be safe and responsible.